let me do a numerical example uh, from the uh, on an incline since I, uh, I haven't done that. So if we have an incline and I have, a, we'll say that's at an angle of 30 degrees and I have an object, let's say it's four kilograms and it's being pulled up the incline by a heavier mass of, we'll say, 10 kilograms. And so in this case, once again, we will not consider friction. And as you can see, the 10 being much heavier than the 4, the direction that this will take will be a go down that way, and this one will be going up the ramp. As we did before, we want to form the free body diagrams for each one. So I'll sketch the 4 kilogram. There's my 4 kilogram. And there is my 10 kilogram. And now we're going to draw the forces on these diagrams. So if we look at the 4 kilogram, what do you see happening to it? Well, you see there's a tension pulling up on it. There's a cable pulling up. We know there is a normal force. And, well, there's another force. It's the weight. But it pulls down, as we analyzed earlier, it pulls down in two directions. And so it pulls down parallel to the ramp. We, at least we can, we can break it up into components parallel to the ramp, in which case this is going to be 4 times g times the sine of 30 degrees, and the component perpendicular to the ramp, which is going to be 4 times g times the cosine of 30 degrees. And we can actually calculate what those numbers are, so we will shortly. Let's look at the other one here, uh, the 10 kilogram mass. And that is going to have a tension going up and a weight going down, which is going to be 10 G. That we can calculate immediately as uh, 10 times 9.8, which is just equal to 98 Newtons. So um, I'll take care of the other ones a little bit later. So um, this is our setup, and now the next step is to draw the, uh, write down Newton's second law in both directions. So let's take this one first. The sum of the forces in the x direction is going to equal m1a. Now, we know this 4 kilogram mass is going to be going up the ramp. So our direction, our positive x direction, is going to be up. And so, therefore, that's going to make the tension a positive arrow. And the 4G sine 30, which is its, the component of its weight, is going to be a negative arrow. Okay. So then we'll know how to combine them in the equation. And so when we write this, we'll have two forces. And we're going to write T minus 4G times the sine of 30 degrees is equal to... M1a. Now, M1 we know is 4, so I'll write 4a there. Let's carry this out a little further. Uh, this is going to be t minus 4 times 9.8 times the sine of 30 is a half, so we'll write that in there like that, equals 4a. And this becomes t minus, let's calculate that, we got um, 4 times 9.8 times 0.5. Right? Yep. And so that becomes 19.6 equals 4a. All right, uh, let's now look at the y component of that. Now, if you remember in the diagram here, what's happening in the y direction? Well, pretty much nothing is happening in this direction. The acceleration is in the y direction, this way should be 0. So when we go to write this, we're going to write the sum of the forces in the y direction is going to equal 0. And let's leave enough room for the next mass. Uh, and so I only have two. I've got one here, and I've got one here. I only have two forces in the y direction. And so that's going to be the normal force is going to minus 4g cosine 30 degrees equals 0. 
So the normal force is going to equal 4g times the cosine of 30, which, we might as well calculate it, equals 4 times 9.8 times 0 0.866. And the normal force comes out to, let me get out of the way, 4 times 9.8 times 0.866. 33.9, so let's close that, 33.9 newtons. So for just practical interest, it really doesn't mean a lot to us now because we're, uh, we don't have friction present. And um, But when we do have friction, it will make a difference. But anyway, let's do the last mass here, and that's going to be the 10 kilogram mass. And so we sum the forces in the y direction. There is no x direction, and that's going to equal m2a. Uh, we already know the weight. This object is moving which way? This object is moving downward. So downward is going to be positive. It's accelerating downward. I should be a little more precise. And so the positive downward arrows, uh, and they'll have negative upward arrows. Given that, we'll write this this way. We'll write 98 minus t, 98 is the downward weight, equals 10a. All right, so that's pretty much as far as we can go with that. Uh, let's do it this way. Let me solve for t here in equation 1. I've got two equations, 1, 2, and two unknowns, tension and acceleration. For this problem, we want the acceleration. You could solve for the tension. It's just a a little messier, but we'll solve for the acceleration first. So the tension then is going to equal, oops, let's do this in the same color here. Tension will be uh, 4a plus 19.6. That's equation one. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this and plug it in there. And so if we do that, we get 98 minus 4a plus 19.6. Don't forget to put the parentheses around there. And that's going to equal 10a. I have to remember the parentheses are around there because I have to distribute the minus sign. So this is going to be 98 minus 4a minus 19.6 equals 10a. You can see that the accelerations are going to add. If I bring the acceleration, if I add 4a to both sides, I get 98 minus 19.6 equals 10a plus 4a. And let's see, 98, 98 minus 19.6 is 78.4. So that is by 78.4 equals 14a. And you can see what's happening here now. Uh, we'll now have a equals 78.4 over 14, or a finally equals 78.4 divided by 14 is 5.6. 5.6. Acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. So that's a practical example of an incline problem.